Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Inquisitive Run Podcast. I'm Shaw, your host. As we approach the end of another year, today I'm going to delve into the idea of life purpose. This seems to come up quite a bit in my interviews, but also in a lot of my spiritual readings. So I will address the issue of existential crisis, the certain pop culture terms that I believe are oxymorons, and the idea of a life review. In conclusion, I aim to provide you with perhaps some details on how you can begin to look at your life having meaning, having purpose. My private therapeutic practice has always been about mind, body, spirit, mind, body, soul. I've always taken inspiration from our pioneers in psychology, such as Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung, and from those who incorporated mindfulness practices and also auto-suggestion, so uh, Franz Mesmer and Emily Kuh. Early on in my studies, I came to understand that, for me, the connecting thread was the unconscious mind in psychotherapy and in spirituality. So to put it simply, whatever your mind perceives as true will come to be. And I know this is a talked about concept. In the years of social media, it's spread out there so much. But people often lose sight of what it truly means. Over the years, this has been labeled as manifestation, mostly due to the huge success of the book and film, The Secret which focused on the law of attraction. And when this first surfaced, many of us who were already deep into the world of Eastern philosophies and practices were thinking and saying, this is a universal law. Uh, This is something that is known throughout spirituality. I remember having a conversation with Ruthie Phillips, who I've interviewed on this show, and she is a friend. We talked about it many years ago when the book first came out, and we were saying this is already known, but it's now being seen as a secret as such. And I suppose it was new information to many people and for many minds, especially the idea of universal energy or universal laws and our unconscious mind. And although people who practice hypnotherapy, people who our hypnotherapists will know about the unconscious mind. But if you have any knowledge of spirituality, not religion, so I'm talking about a belief system that bases its core practice on waiting for a god or deity to do something for you. So it's not religion. I'm talking about the literal law of attraction, which is you doing the work and watching it manifest, watching it come to fore, you being responsible for what surfaces in your life. That is very different from perhaps waiting on someone else to do it. Now, there are aspects of, yes, you bringing in your helpers or God or Jesus or Buddha or whoever it is that you rely upon or you pray to a deity so you, work, you may work together in spirituality. We, we talk about guides and helpers. Certainly in Catholicism, we talk about angels and saints. So whatever your belief system is fine. So this isn't about religion. I just wanted to be clear. This is just about what the universe, you know, I often say this. Einstein talked about energy. And this is what I'm talking about, universal energy. This is what I'm talking about, universal energy. So today... I'm going to talk about how and why people are focused on their purpose, what they perceive to be a purpose, why they are here, and how to identify your purpose and fulfill it. But first, what exactly do we mean by purpose? Most of my definitions will come from the Oxford English Dictionary, which is a reliable source. So the definition of purpose is the intention, and remember that word, the intention, aim or function of something, the thing that something is supposed to achieve. It sounds simple, but for some reason, 
people appear to have lumped it in all one meaning, a singular meaning or singular design. I propose to you that a human being never has just one purpose in this lifetime on this earth. The belief that you have one purpose has been the bane of so many people's existences, leading to what I believe is an existential crisis. Again, another phrase that has been used so much in the wrong context that its meaning is becoming diluted due to the masses that is social media. So let's break that down. By definition, an existential crisis refers to the mix of feelings and questions you may have regarding why you're here, the meaning of your life, and the purpose of your life. So it's a mix of feelings about that. You know, who am I? What am I? Why am I here? By the very nature of humanity, these feelings, these thoughts can be stifling and in extreme circumstances, it can lead to depression, a feeling of being stuck, uselessness, worthlessness, and severe unhappiness. Existential, exit, exist. Those two words will have meaning later on, but we're going to focus on why do we exist. Why do we exist? Why do you exist? Why were you, why were you born? Now, scientifically, we know why you were born, the sperm and the egg. Okay, we, we, we all know that. However, and we'll touch upon this later, you know, how did that happen? All these questions lead to the crisis and the, oh no, I don't know the answers or, oh no, I'm doing it all wrong or I don't know where to turn. But also this leads to the, oh, no, I should be doing something else. This something else is what we need to pay attention to because it means you are thinking you are not where you are meant to be. And not only what you are meant to be or where you're meant to be, but you're not doing what you're meant to be doing. Hence the crisis. We define crisis as a time of great danger, of great difficulty or doubt when problems must be solved or important decisions must be made. And I'm going to bring the issue of decision making back in. This means that there must be imminent change. A change will happen or you'll remain where you are. Now, this is questionable. This is questionable. And this is the purpose of this talk to talk about why you may believe that where you are right now in its entirety may be off purpose, that you may not be living your true life or being your authentic self. These are all catchphrases that are more modern day. The ancients didn't talk about being authentic because they were knowledgeable about authenticity. And whatever way you are being right now is who you are right now, even if it's a deviation from your baseline or how you are for most of the time, most of the day. And when we talk about baseline in medical terms, we refer to a person's presentation, usually before a condition is diagnosed. So they may be in a healthy state of condition, mind, how it's affecting them now. And then this is measured over time to know any changes. And then it's compared to how they were when the condition was first diagnosed or before they had the condition. So your baseline is important so that you can monitor your health and maintain good health and preventative strategies. When we talk about baseline in psychology, this is similar both in terms of research and before participants take part in a study or a trial. So in terms of psychological presentation, for example, uh, before a mental health problem is diagnosed, you would have a baseline of behavior. 
then there is a measurement after treatment commences, if treatment commences. So you may return to your baseline, so the treatment may be effective, or you may deviate from your baseline and never return due to you know, many contributing factors. In terms of your life, how you live, what encompasses your day-to-day -day living, how you interact with the world in which you live, you have a baseline. This is how you normally are in everyday life. This is how you are recognized by others, also how you recognize yourself. So sometimes you hear people say, you know what, I didn't recognize who I was for a moment. I, I seem to have been somebody else. It can be easy to confuse the issue of who you are and where you're meant to be and separate them wanting to distance yourself from your idea, the image, or perception of where you want to be. And this is a form of dissociation, whereby you feel disconnected from yourself, your world, and where you perceive you should be. Feeling disconnected from the world around you, if you think you may be dissociating, you will be forgetting entire days. You will have lost the ability to feel some physical pain. So you may accidentally cut yourself and not notice it until you see the blood. And what is most relevant to purpose to this talk is you may even feel unsure about who you are. And believing that you may have identity suited to certain situations. So believing that you switch and change to adapt to certain situations and that you may uh, change your identity somehow. In severe circumstances, and this is, this is only in severe circumstances, this could lead to dissociative identity disorder. So a disordered way of seeing yourself you know, having different identities. Never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. Thank you for your support. You make this podcast possible. Now, back to the show. The last one is why I don't believe in another very overly used pseudo-psychology term that I think influencers have coined, which is imposter syndrome. My belief is that the feeling that you are not capable of doing a job because you are new at it, either new at it, perhaps newly qualified, or you don't have the proper qualifications, is a form of dissociation, especially if you have the qualifications. You are separating yourself from an image of perhaps the all-knowing, all-doing, which is impossible. If you've just started a job or career, you're not an imposter. You are in the role. It's not as though you haven't been given the role. That would be an imposter. Someone out of the blue just turning up saying, hello, I'm the new whoever, when they aren't who they are. They aren't who they say they are. This is an actual imposter. So it's important to think about, uh, I suppose, issues I want to say, or even the words you use if you're going to say something like it's an imposter syndrome. I think about what imposter means and think about what syndrome means. If you're in business, and you're learning as you go, as most people do, this is not an imposter. You're not an imposter. You need to be clear about why you feel as though you're an imposter. The only reason that I can see it's been labeled a syndrome is because of the mix of feelings associated with it, which is why I'm bringing this in about purpose, because you remember earlier I spoke about the mix of feelings people have about this. There is, however, the issue of many people saying they have qualifications or abilities that they do not have. 
and setting themselves up in roles that they are not qualified to do. That is an imposter. And therefore, you would feel like one because you are one. But there's a difference. For instance, to use myself in, as, as an example, I am a member of the National Counseling Society. If I did not have a counseling qualification, I would not be allowed membership. Same for the British Psychological Society. If I didn't have a master's degree in psychology, I would not be allowed to be a member. I mean, there's different levels of membership, but still you have to prove what you say you are. These are reputable organizations, though, you know, there are many out there. I chose the ones I feel most aligned with ethically, especially the counseling one. If you are saying that you are a coach, for example, you should be able to show your qualification in coaching, the membership body uh, to which you belong. And if there are any issues in your practice, someone can go to that governing body and state their concerns. You should also be insured, of course. The arts are more difficult as there are sometimes no other qualification you can have. Your expertise as a musician, um, a tour manager, an actor, a painter may be enough. But there may be no ethics committee to which you can take a concern. It's one of those things that I did witness in L.A. Uh, I saw it so much when I worked on movie and TV sets, directors yelling, shouting, swearing at people, actors, extras, not treating people very well and there was nothing people felt they could do about it although you know we if you examine that there's ways that we could look at that why didn't they do something about it but getting directly back to the issue of purpose though this is all a part of it wherever you are right now whatever you are doing and whomever you're doing it with i propose to you that you are on purpose. You are exactly where you are meant to be. And this is a good time to bring in the concept of life reviews. When I was studying Eastern philosophies many years ago, I began doing life reviews. I call them life reviews. I mean, those reviews have been the catalyst to most of the life changes I've made over the past 20 years or so. Though I've always completed many life reviews, even when I was little. I think probably the first Eastern philosopher that I consumed in great volumes all in one go was Buddha. I was attracted to the whole let go and let live idea of life. Certainly, I mean, we can become so disappointed in the way we're treated, especially by others in our lives, Sometimes you don't take on board how you treat yourself as well, and that can be worse than how others treat you. I had to find a way to be okay with myself, know that I was doing the best that I could do, and knowing that people will have their own stuff, their own purpose, their own purposes, their own agenda, beliefs, just as I have. All that Buddha encompassed for me, seemed to come down to one thing. What you think, you become. And if you hold on to it all, you have to shed the past over and over and over again. For me, that felt like too much work. Why do I need to revisit, revisit, revisit? This is a combination of what I find is a universal truth that is often overlooked. The internet spouts out lots of words. You know, we see all these quotes everywhere. I've seen some supposedly Buddha quotes that are anything but. I'm sure Buddha's looking down saying, I never said that. Where did that come from? I never said that. Or Buddha's probably saying, look, that's been taken way out of context. This is what I really meant. If we take this simple philosophy, the idea of letting go, letting others live as they live, live as they are, you can apply that to purpose as well. And you can apply that to yourself. In doing so, you can start to do something that releases the feeling of being off 
purpose. And that is what I call integration. You will begin to integrate who you are and where you are right now and accept that you must open your eyes and take in what is happening around you, what is happening within. The two are connected. The outside world only reflects that that is within you. So I invite you to try this. The next time you are out and about, it's good to get out. Don't do it at home because you're too familiar. So the next time you're out and about, take a quick picture, a snapshot of anything, just a, an area, just anything. But don't look at it. Take the picture and don't look at it. I know it's a natural inclination. Everybody snaps the picture and wants to look at it. Don't look at it. Then just stand there for a moment and look around you, taking in your surroundings. Then wait a few days and then look at the picture. Notice what you identify from looking around and what you hadn't noticed that might be in the picture. Try to work out a percentage. Have you noticed 90% of what the picture reflects? How many times did you say, I don't remember seeing that, but there it is in the picture. This only means that you're taking in either a lot less or you're very focused on too much of what's within. Whatever is within will be reflecting that which is out. So for instance, if you're someone who is quite observant and you are always looking outside of yourself, then most, I would say 90% of what the picture reflects, you'll remember. You'll remember all of it, but perhaps even 100%. If you're someone who's very, very focused on within, all you can think about is you, your feelings, your thoughts, how you're feeling. That's all you can think about. You're very closed in. You know, the image would be head down, hands up on your forehead. And literally, if, if your head could go within your body right now, that's what would happen. If you're someone like that, then you wouldn't have noticed a lot of what, what was out. Maybe the tree, and that's it. You completely missed the three birds in the tree. You completely missed the snow on the ground, the dog that flitted across the, the, the park, uh, the wheelchair. You missed the traffic lights. You would have missed a lot. If you are in an existential crisis, you will be focused on your inner world, not your outer world. And therefore, you'll be missing some clues as to how to move forward, if indeed you choose to do so. Look out, look around, become aware. What are others showing you about the world, about yourself? Whatever they show you about themselves is them. How you perceive it is you. So there is this dichotomy about the inner world, outer world, and the integration, how you integrate those two. But they are one and the same because whatever you're feeling, thinking, believing inside will reflect it on the outside. The old saying is, whatever you believe, you can achieve. Well, the opposite, whatever you achieve, believe it. Whatever shows up for you, believe that's what you, sh what you thought showed up. Whatever you believed is showing up. So when you're having difficult times, okay, the law of attraction will bring that in. Then somehow, uh, you know, you've brought these lessons towards you for a reason. And someone once said to me years and years ago that any problems anybody's having, they've actually chosen. Now, 
<laughs> you can look at this a couple of ways, really. Now, I believe you have to be careful of who you say that to. If someone's in crisis, you really have to temper how you say these things. Your message, again, everybody's not meant to give advice because some people have no filter. They don't know how to say things. I've addressed this on other podcasts. How you see yourself and what you feel you should be doing. The only reason you may feel that you are off your purpose or that you need to search for your purpose in life is that you are not seeing the here and now, the present. You are living in either the future or the past. In my experience of working with people in the spiritual and coaching aspect, it is usually the past they're living in. Though they believe it's the future because they're looking to when I get this or when I get that or when I become this or when I get that, when I have that, that is the future. But they are actually in their past because they're judging what has happened up to now, which is a present. Past hurts because they are judging what has happened up to now, which is the past. Past hurts, past mistakes, past decisions, past stagnation. I invite you to try this. Ask yourself this question. What is stopping me from making decisions about my future? What is stopping me from making decisions about my future? Already, some of you will be taken aback because you may not have expected that question, but notice what comes up for you. Are you annoyed? Are you angry? Do you feel guilt, frustration, fear? I'll ask it again. What is stopping you from making decisions about your future? Are you feeling pain, grief, hurt, panic, uneasiness, humor perhaps? What is stopping me from making decisions about my future? Whatever you are feeling as you contemplate the question, will be the answer to the question. To spell it out, the thing that is stopping you from making decisions about your future is the fear, let's say it's fear, you felt fear, it's the fear you will feel about failing. The thing that is stopping you from making decisions about your future is, let's say you feel hurt, the hurt you feel about your parents' divorce. The thing that is stopping you from making decisions about your future is the guilt you may feel about leaving her at the altar. The thing that is stopping you from making decisions about your future is the panic you feel about leaving that job. Because you have, I'm going to use another overly used term, unresolved issues, and this is often used out of context as well, but this time within the context of what is troubling you and stopping you from making decisions, because you have these issues, you've become stuck. And not only are you stuck, but you are unhappy about it, and you're unable to accept your present and you are rejecting the possibility of your future and what it might look like, and therefore you remain in the past. Still, you are not off purpose. Your mental health is a priority. Nine Peaches Therapies offers gentle and soothing therapy for your mind, your body, and your soul. 
These self-help recordings focus on improving the quality of your life by providing what you need right now, be it confidence, positivity, restful sleep, or relaxation. The soothing, calming music has been specially composed to accompany the body of words created by me, an expert practitioner, to help you to achieve the best result. Reprogram your mind using the most gentle and effective guided meditations infused with highly suggestible hypnosis to rid yourself of anxiety, fear, stress, and negative thinking. These guided meditations can help you to clear and cleanse any unwanted energy that may be negatively affecting your everyday life. Improve the quality of your life in just a few minutes a day. Nine Peaches Therapies, Holistic Therapeutic Consultancy. Finding your purpose in life as such is not good enough. So it feels like a big, big deal. What's my purpose? Why am I here? Who am I? What am I supposed to be doing? It sounds huge. You'll have several purposes. Human beings are multidimensional and therefore to expect humans to have only one purpose in life is unrealistic. And it doesn't say a lot about humans. So let's talk about purpose. What is purpose? So just to run through some ideas about purpose. So some may see their purpose as mothering children, birthing them, mothering them. That's all. That's all they feel they're here to do. They are not interested in having a business or taking up a trade or going to uni. They just want to be a father or a mother, a parent. Some see their purpose as being a partner, husband, wife. That's it. No more, no less. They see this as their purpose in life. Some see their purpose, the reason why they're here, as helping those who are wrongly accused. So they may uh, direct this sort of inclination for justice as such towards working within the judicial system. Some may find... Uh, that they're blessed with extraordinary musical talents and they may believe their purpose in life the reason they're here is to entertain the masses we have many people in history who have often said that they're here for the music they're married to their music to bring love to bring joy to others through their lyrics their song that's it that's their purpose nothing else now, alongside these examples will be the idea that not only might you entertain others, but you may find you wish to partner and have a family. So that becomes a life purpose. But can you see the multitude of purpose? It doesn't mean that all of a sudden, if you're a musician, you're very successful, and then you get married, that you're off purpose. It's another purpose. I'm not sure where the idea came from that everyone has to have one life purpose. Your purpose will be sometimes quadruple fold or more. In this incarnation, you may have several careers. You may mother your own children or other children by taking them in. Or you may be a doctor dedicated to your profession and you have no interest in marriage or children. You may even believe that your sole purpose in life is to practice medicine, and that's it. All beings do have purpose. There is a reason for everything. It is only when we become ego-entrenched, in pity, uh, usually pity, that we slip into this existential crisis and begin to think about not having so it's always a lack not having enough and also not being enough and therefore believing that you do not know what your purpose of being on this planet entails and that you're unable to identify your purpose it is up to you to identify your purpose 
So all those tarot readings that you're having, trying to find someone who'll tell you what your purpose is or what you need to do, they may shed some light on things for you because spirit can give some inklings and things and the cards can show and mediums, you know, mediumship can show or even help you to identify your skills, which may help you make decisions about what you might change or do. The way to ascertain your purpose is to look at your life's review. A life review can literally change your life. Notice any patterns. Notice what you keep going back to, what you can't seem to shake, what you long for, what you long for, what brings you joy. You'll then start to identify your purposes in this lifetime. I believe that a lot of people are becoming confused because they're watching the very self-absorbed world of social media. And they may have, you think, people may think that your life purpose is to save the world. You know, it has to be huge and big. Uh, their life purpose may be to expose people, to set the world straight, to gossip about celebrities to educate the masses with their views, maybe even to be a spiritual guru, to read other people's minds or body language even. There's so many channels about body language or to give tarot readings on YouTube. All that's well and good. And you may be doing all of that now. Although saving the world is not done by one person. So I mentioned the ego entrenched, my own term, <laughs> ego entrenched, uh, you know, feeling of self-pity, all based upon not feeling like you're enough. So to save the world is the probably one of the best examples. How can you save the world? And yet Hollywood continues to make films about it. But how can you save the world on your all on your own? You may be doing a lot of things, and some of it will contribute to helping the world become better, and some of it will contribute to helping people become better. Saving the world from what exactly? The other piece of the puzzle, or the purpose puzzle, like I call it, is the idea of intention. And I know a lot of people have talked about intention, but I want to break intention down. So in psychology, we refer to intentionality. Um, and that's just the ability of, of somebody's mind to represent something. In spirituality, we refer to intention as aim or outcome, you know, what you intend to happen, the result of your actions or the plan, the result of the plan. Whatever your purpose or purpose is in life, they would have intention. I ask you to examine your intention. Using examples that I've mentioned before, what do you intend when you set up a gossip channel about celebrities? What do you intend to happen if you speak about spirituality? What do you intend to happen if you write a book about anxiety? Or what do you intend to happen when you write romance novels? What do you intend to happen when you look at other people's body language? Do you intend that you will be giving valuable information? And if so, to whom? You can apply this angle to any life purpose you're intending or contemplating. Some say that we choose our life purpose. And others say that it is destined. There may be a bit of both. For instance, using the musical example, uh, something I know a lot about, you know, someone like Freddie Mercury with an octave range and his uh, showmanship. He knew early on that he had something that which the world you know, might resonate. However, could he have chosen to ignore the obvious signs? Yes. He could have chosen to only sing in a shower, never in public. But 
could he have done so? Could he have ignored it? I, I don't know. Some things push us, knock on our heads. Some things are so forthcoming, so forthright. Sometimes people constantly go on about those things that you're unable to ignore. And this is where spirituality comes in and your beliefs about this topic. Could Stephen Hawkins have chosen to ignore his scientific genius? I, I don't know. It was a part of his very being, everything about him. Everything he did, you know, had scientific prowess, everything. I suppose he could have done something else, but would he have thrived in the way he did when he was doing what he was meant to do? And this is where you may feel off purpose. If you are in a job, a career, uh, a marriage, a partnership, a home, a, a building, a country, uh, a friendship, if you're in a family where you feel more secure and happy than not, then there's something about those scenarios that are aligned with your purpose. And even if it's the opposite, that where you feel more anxious and worried than not, there's something about that situation by which you're meant to learn something for yourself. Something that may help you become more on purpose. Is it just the opposite? That you're not aligned and that you're off purpose? This is why it is important to examine your life and to live consciously, just to be aware of yourself. So ask yourself, all of these life questions query your life, but don't query your existence. This is why it is important to examine your life. This is why it is important to examine your life and to live consciously. Be aware of your life. Ask yourself these life Questions. Query your life, but not your existence. You are here now. We know the odds. You know, some of you barely made it. It was a tough birth, perhaps. Uh, your mother suffered. Uh, perhaps you were on a ventilator for some time. Some of you have survived great hardship through life, physical difficulties, traumas, heartaches, losses, mental anguish. Yet, you have survived. You are here. Taking yourself out of this life is not the answer. And whilst this is a huge topic, I believe it's appropriate for me to say this here whilst we're talking about purpose. Why are you here? I believe that you're meant to be here. And whatever hardships you have in this lifetime, although they may feel unbearable, they are learning curves. And once you bend and curve with those lessons, you find a bit more road that is straight for some time. And then another curve may occur out of the blue, perhaps one you didn't see coming. Then you learn more about your life, your tenacity. And perhaps you learn more about others as well. Knowing about others can help. Everyone is not meant to then go out and shout it out to the world or go onto social media and talk about it. Everything is not for others. Maybe one of your life purposes is to do that, but maybe it isn't. Whilst existentialists believe that we came here alone and we will leave alone, the fact is that we are unable to achieve anything without others. And if you say, well, I mean, I shop by myself, I cook by myself, I earn my own money, take another look. Without the shops, 
you would not be able to shop. That involves other people without the company you work for. Or even if you're a business owner without customers, you have no business. You need others, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. And lastly, we cannot copy someone else's life purposes. This is why some people do what they do. It works for them, but may not work for others. You can look at the music charts and reality TV for that matter. Why were the Kardashians such a phenomenon? A show that I've only watched once and everybody laughs at me about that. Everybody thinks, oh my God, you, yes, I do know who they are. Yes, I do. But I only needed to see it once to see why they've become a phenomenon. You know, what is the one thing that supersedes everything that they're showing here? It is connection, interaction, and life purposes. Now, I would watch for that. Here's a perfect example, no matter your personal opinions about them. Here's an example of a family who accepts their strengths, their weaknesses, and their gifts. Well, I, I mean, I've been challenged when I said that. I went through this talk with somebody and they said, gifts. <laughs> Some, some, some of what may be apparent, some may not. But nevertheless, uh, if you do a deep dive, I'm sure you'll find something there. Why has this not worked for anyone else to that scale? The answer is purpose or purposes. They are aligned or they appear to be. I could be wrong about this, but I don't believe I am. I, I believe that they are aware of what they are meant to be doing and how they're meant to be doing it. And the rest is based on public opinion. Every, you know, whether you view it as succeeding or failing, that's a public opinion. And people's opinions can change. So something can be popular for a while and then something can die off. And this is the idea, I bring that up because A, it's a, it, most people will have heard the name and, you know, they become, I think, as famous or the name is as known as Michael Jackson, I think, or Prince. So everybody knows the name. And I think when we talk about life purpose, everybody may not know your name. That doesn't mean you're off purpose. So we have to have a little bit of a meeting with ego as well to say, right, am I looking for love? Am I looking for love through the masses? Because that's not real love. That's fake love. You don't know these people. They don't know you. Even in the world of uh, reality TV, you don't know them. And they don't know you. And even in the world of social media, most people you don't know. And they don't really know you. All they see is what they see. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, email us at inquire at theinquisitiverin.com. That's E-N-Q-U-I-R-E -E at theinquisitiverin.com. Be sure to check all social media, especially the Facebook page, for new topics being discussed. And if you can contribute, please let us know so you can be a guest on the show. Now, back to the show. So what is your purpose? Why are you here? And to keep it simple... You're probably meant to be doing a few things whilst you're here on this earth plane, whilst you're here now. Depending on your belief systems, you may reincarnate. Perhaps you'll do something else next time. But just to look at your life purpose, why are you here? So do a quick review. If you're, let's say, if you're at least 30 years old, have a little look back and see what you've been doing so far. Did you go to uni? What did you choose to study? Okay, what are you doing now? Do a life review. I talked about life review earlier. Go back and listen to it. Life review. Look at your life. Start to connect some threads there. Take out a pen and pad, you know, or take out your, your Google Notes, whatever it is you use. Draw a little diagram. You know, study biology, then did, I don't know, worked at Gucci, I don't know, then worked this place, then became a chef. 
then married, then moved to Italy. You know, write all that stuff down, do a life review, and then start to look at the similarities. Are you drawn back to something? Do you keep moving back to the same place? Or do you keep returning to a particular profession? Are you always being asked to do something? Now, I can say this because I need to say this, a good example I've come across recently. Sometimes people can be very aware of what they're good at, but they could align themselves with companies who either won't acknowledge it because of their own stuff, things they have a problem with. They could be jealous of your skills. They could be fearful that you may uh, represent uh, something that they don't have. You know, we see this happen all the time. And so therefore, they may not push you forward for those positions or for the things you know you're good at. You may even outline for them things that you know you can do, you're good at doing. It, you've got evidence of it, you've got feedback of it, you've got written acknowledgement of it from others, and you find that they still don't listen or push you forward. Now, that will be an internal issue with that company. That is nothing to do with you, and you mustn't align that with purpose. Now, where purpose comes in is making decisions that we talked about before. Do you remain where you are or do you begin to look at somewhere or something whereby you can use your skills and you're not dependent on somebody else, I touched upon this earlier, somebody else to acknowledge your skills for you. You know your skills. Now, some people think they're good at things and they aren't, but I'm talking about things that you know you're good. You know, we, we, we've, we've all had the uh, what was it? Um, X factor and all that. But some people, you know what you're good at doing. You've known it for years and years and years. Do a life review. See what your purposes are. And in closing, let's get to the bit about how to shift your idea about purpose. So the first thing to do is to rid yourself of the idea that your life purpose is global or that your life purpose is to be famous in some way. I saw somewhere recently where someone said that their life purpose was to be the next big thing of some sort. And I also saw something recently where somebody was feeding into uh, ego and saying that their life purpose was to do something huge. They were projecting this thing. What they were really doing was projecting what they saw their own purpose as onto somebody else. Everyone won't be world famous. Now, you can be famous within your own circle, your own family, your own friend group. If you're looking for world fame, unless it's part and parcel of your life purpose, to be, uh, for example, prime minister, you cannot escape the fame that comes with that, then something is off. If it's not a part and parcel, if it's not part and parcel of, of what your life purpose is, you're looking for something else. Perhaps you're looking for love. You may, perhaps you're looking to be loved by loads and loads of people. I've always loved the example of rock stars, simply because I grew up on so much rock, rock and roll, rock and soul, soul music. And I grew up in the time of real rock stars. These were gods and goddesses who ruled the stage with talent, presence, energy that touched the masses. Some documentaries about these rock guards, um, you know, that you see in interviews, some of them have said that the only reason they played guitar was to get lots of girls or to, um, or that they wanted to be in a band to be famous. This is the greatest example of life purposes. Some of those bands achieved a level of success that I don't think we'll ever see again. And others fell off quickly, by the wayside, and, and 
you know, they faded into oblivion. We've never heard from them since and probably will never hear from them again. Those who achieve success were meant to do so, but there would have been something inside of them that believed it was meant to be. Even though some of them may say they weren't sure, but they would have hoped for the best, and hoping for the best is intention. You intend the best outcome. That's the plan. That's the intention. And that's what you need for purpose. Purpose is intention. And intention is purpose. Rid yourself of the idea that you are here to do just one thing, one worldwide big thing, and that everyone needs to know about it. Do that and you'll find immediately that you are stripping away some of that fear, some of that anxiety, that frustration and worthlessness that you may be feeling by believing you don't know what your purpose on this earth is. Just to give you some context, I'll leave you with a personal story. I entered university originally to study journalism. A year in, I still hadn't become aligned with it. I mean, I enjoyed the people. I started interning in, a journal in the actual journalism department at school, which was great at uni, but it wasn't what I expected. Obviously, I didn't know anything, but I thought something different. I had written for the high school newspaper. So I, I, I had no other experience up until then. And again, just to be clear, I did enjoy the people, but I always, I was always aware of energy. And I always felt when things weren't right, when I wasn't meant to be there or I wasn't meant to be doing something. Now, sometimes that didn't stop me from doing it. Again, that doesn't mean I was off purpose. It means that I was meant to learn something. I was longing, though, for something else. Now, notice I said something else, not something more. I left uni after one and a half years, and I went back home. I had always been interested in fashion, so I took um, like a little temp job while I worked out what I, just for a few months, worked out what I wanted to do. So I started to look into fashion. And I found a course in L.A., applied for it, and was accepted. So I moved to L.A. and had a few years of starting and stopping that course. It was at FIDM, Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. Yes, the one that was featured in the hills. That's where I first went to study fashion. It just wasn't for me. I was distracted, however, by other endeavors, you know, such as entering dance contests and winning and doing you know, acting extra work. So I was, I was um, distracted. It was time to get serious, though. So I found another fashion school. So notice I stuck with my decision. I'd made the decision. I stuck with it. I found another fashion school in Westwood and was accepted. Finally, it felt right. I was really enjoying it, getting such good grades. It was interactive. It was challenging. It was so much fun. It was lots of good stuff. It was a two-year course, and I got uh, to study fashion journalism as well. So that was interesting. But also there was a psychology course, but I'll come to that. Um, funny how when you're aligned, it works. And as the year ended, one of my teachers, one of the uh, professors said to me, you're doing so well, why don't you go to London to complete your final year, or even Dubai? And of course, the rest is history. Uh, I had a good fashion career here, uh, but also I had studied psychology at uni and fashion psychology at the fashion school. So the bug, the psychology bug had bitten, and you know the rest, here we are. Between all that, there was also my personal life, life purposes within that as well. And so, you see, we may have many work incarnations and personal ones, personal incarnations, but all the while we are on purpose. If you can stick with it, 
you'll end up somewhere exactly where you're meant to be, whilst being exactly where you're meant to be. And if you find that it doesn't feel aligned or that perhaps you've outgrown some of what you were already meant to do, because remember there can be several purposes, you can always make a new decision, change your mind, become aligned, listen, listen to yourself, your heart, the vibes around you, listen to your, you know, your surroundings, other people as well, some you'll accept, some you won't, and you can make a new decision. All in all, you are never off purpose. Rid yourself of this romanticized idea of the existential crisis. It's become so romanticized now. It's the stuff of many films, many movies, many TV shows, many documentaries. Yes, the midlife crisis, the existential crisis, all of that, we can all get to certain points and milestones in our lives. But everything doesn't have to be a crisis. And you can always make new decisions. You are never off purpose. You are only on purpose because whatever's happening right now is meant to be. And the way to ease that journey is to open your arms and accept it. And once you accept it, you can make a decision about it. And reject it if you need to. You can exit the job. Or you can change what you're doing. Get out of a situation or put yourself into a situation. I hope that's giving you some food for thought. And I hope it helps to shift and to ease some of your concerns about life purpose. I do want to take this time to wish you all a very, very happy holidays, wherever you are in the world. This can be a very joyous time for some and a very challenging time for others. However you spend it, take good, good care of yourself. Be patient. Be very patient with yourself. Be gentle with yourself and others. Give yourself special treats. Enjoy all the things that you enjoy. You can even wrap a special gift up for yourself and open it. And if you can, just thank yourself for being here and for participating in life. The next podcast will air on New Year's Day, the 1st of January. So I look forward to seeing you all then. Happy holidays and see you then. Thanks so much for listening today. Make sure you subscribe and follow on all streaming platforms. Leave me a comment and also let me know if there's any particular topics you'd like me to discuss. See you next time.